Alright, this is 11.4 mass energy equivalence. This is the last part of chapter 11. We'll be heading on to chapter 12 next. So in mass energy equivalence, we're talking about the famous equation E equals mc squared. And you saw this probably in grade 11, but we're going to look at it in a bit more detail today. And we're starting off with relativistic mass. So you might remember from the last lesson we looked at momentum. And we said that momentum changes because mass actually changes as we get faster and faster. So as we get to a higher speed, our relativistic mass looks something like m relativistic. is equal to m, which is our rest mass here, over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So this is our familiar correction term. So the mass actually is going to increase as we get faster. Okay, and this is here, m is our rest mass. All right, so if mass is increasing, or rather mass is depending on the speed, then the equation that you know, e equals mc squared, is actually a generalization. It's not what Einstein originally talked about. What he really uh, figured out first was that the total energy of a moving object is equal to, so E equals mc squared, which you know about, divided by this correction term, 1 minus v squared over c squared. So that's the actual equation here. The total energy is equal to mc squared over root 1 minus v squared over c squared. And that is our total energy for an object that is moving. Now, every object also has a certain amount of energy just by nature of having mass. This is called as rest energy. And the rest energy is equal to E rest is equal to mc squared. Okay, and so that's the term you're familiar with. You'll see that we have the total energy when you're moving at any speed. The rest energy is just mc squared because if the object is at rest, that means that v is 0. So we have root 1 minus 0 over c squared. So we just have over 1, mc squared over 1. So here we get the rest energy. This means that any object, just by nature of having mass, has energy. And that energy that it has is equal to mc squared. If it's moving faster, it gets more energy. And its total energy is mc squared over root 1 minus v squared over c squared. And so that total energy is made up of the rest energy plus kinetic. So that's what we have here. The kinetic energy is equal to the total energy minus the rest energy. And so this is relativistic kinetic energy now. So we have relativistic everything. This is our relativistic kinetic energy. E total minus E rest. So I'll just put in what that is equal to here. mc squared over root 1 minus v squared over c squared minus mc squared. That's the term. That'll be on your formula sheet. That's how we get the kinetic energy of a moving object. And you'll see in the picture to the right, we have traditional kinetic energy. And we have Newtonian, or sorry, we have um, special relativity kinetic energy. Again, you'll see that it is approaching this asymptote here. It's approaching this vertical line of, of C. Nothing can go faster than C. The closer it gets, the more energy it has, because mass is getting larger and larger and larger as you get close to C, to the point where Something that has mass has infinite mass at the speed of light, which is another reason why light has, can't have any mass, because it's moving at the speed of light. It can't have any mass, or else it would have infinite mass. All right, so conservation of mass energy. Again, you might have heard of this in um, grade 11. It's the idea that energy isn't conserved. Mass energy is conserved, where, where mass and energy are basically the same thing. And we can convert between mass and energy. So the main important statement here is that rest mass and energy 
our equivalent. So when something is at rest, if you could say it has mass, you could say it has energy, they're basically the same thing. Okay, so we have a few problems here. This says the average home in Canada uses 3.6 times 10 to the 10 joules of energy per day. Imagine that a cabbage with a rest mass of 0.75 kilograms could be completely converted to another form of energy. Although in a nuclear reaction, only a fraction of the mass is actually converted to electrical energy. So here we're going to take a whole cabbage, we're going to take the whole thing and conver convert it into energy, which is not how nuclear reactors work. They only convert a very small part of that mass into energy. So calculate how much energy is released by this cabbage. Well, this is the cabbage at rest. It's not moving. So E rest is equal to mc squared. And that's 0 0.750 kilograms times 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. This gives us a rest energy of 6.75 times 10 to the 16 joules. There we go. So that's how much energy we have just from our cabbage. And if we were to do the right significant digits, that's 6.8 times 10 to the 16. Okay, next one. To determine the number of days this cabbage could supply energy for an average home in Canada. The problem told us an average home uses per day 3.6 times 10 to the 10 joules. We have 6.8 times 10 to the 16, so we can find out our time in days is equal to 6.75 times 10 to the 16 divided by 3.6 times 10 to the 10. That's for each day, so this is going to give us a time in days. 1.9 times 10 to the 6 days. That's a lot of days. And just for the comparison here, we can find how many that is in years. That is, what well, we're going to say that's greater than 5,000 years. That's a really long time. So a single cabbage could give us more than 5,000 years of energy for a single home. That's if we were able to find a way to convert all of that energy, all of that mass into energy. All right, next page here. We're going to have another problem, but just a couple notes about subatomic particles first here. So for subatomic sub particles, they have very, very small masses. And so we, we use electron volts, EV, electron volts, instead of instead of joules and kilograms instead of joules and kilograms to describe the energy and mass of small particles Now notice I've said we're using electron volts, which is a measure of energy, instead of joules and kilograms, to describe the energy and mass of small particles. That's right, I can, I can describe the mass of a small particle using electron volts, even though that's a measure of energy. Because we're at this point, we're basically saying mass, energy, they're the same thing, they're interchangeable. So I can take my mass, go mc squared, get that result in electron volts, and we're good to go. So I can do that. I can use electron volts to describe both energy and mass. Okay, for our conversion here, we have one electron volt is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And that number should look familiar because that is the same number, same as E, which is our charge of an electron. Except it's in whoop, except it's in joules. Except in J, not coulombs. 
So it's the same number as the charge of an electron. 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And an electron volt is how much um, energy it takes to accelerate one electron by one volt. All right. An electron has a speed of 0.9 c in a laboratory, and the rest mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. With respect to the laboratory's frame of reference, calculate the electron's rest energy, total energy, and kinetic energy in electron volts. Well, rest energy, E rest, is equal to mc squared. Good. So I've got here 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms times 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. And then I need to convert that from joules into electron volts. So I'm going to use my ratio of 1 electron volt to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. That's my ratio there. And it gives me an answer of 0 0.512 mega electron volts. There we go. Mega electron volts. So that's um, electron volts times a million. Okay, so that's our rest energy. We're going to get our total energy. It equals mc squared over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. I already have my um, mc squared in terms of electron volts. I calculated that above. So I've got here 0 0.512 mega electron volts divided by my root 1 minus we have 0.9c over uh, 0.9c squared over c squared so I get 0 0.90 squared gives me an answer here of 1.17 mega electron volts there we go now again, so a mega electron volt, this is the same as saying 1.17 times 10 to the 6 electron volts. All right, and finally we want our kinetic energy. This is the total energy minus the rest energy. Our total was 1.17 mega electron volts. Our Rest energy was 0 0.512 mega electron volts. This gives us 0 0.66 mega electron volts. There we go. That's how we solve that kind of problem. Enjoy the few at the bottom of the page, and we'll see you in the next lesson.